Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry. My pup's names are Sunny and Riley. And each week we talk with different therapy dog teams and researchers around the world about the impact that they're making in their area. If you're just getting started or you're not sure where to get started, we have a free guide that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. And we also have a community. You can join at community.therapydogtalk.com. So I'm very excited for you to meet Neil and Breezy today. I'll get them in here. Hi, Neil. You might need to flip your camera. There we go. It's not my How are you? Good to see you. I feel like I've been chatting yeah, keep... with you over the couple days just from watching your video. Yeah, I actually dressed up for the occasion. So I'm wearing my official homemade. If you can see it forwards, it's America's pet therapy dog, Breezy. So there's Breezy. <laughs> There's some people in the assisted living around him. And uh, yeah, in my spare time, I designed a uh, t-shirt with Breezy's picture in it. So we're good. Very cool. Very cool. And I know you originally found me through Cheyenne and Tiana, and she's in here too. So oh, hey. I see And Cheyenne, the <laughs> man, I just love when she posts on social media, the airport visits they do, and it warms my heart, especially seeing somebody that works as hard as she does. So shout out to Arizona and Cheyenne. <laughs> awesome. Well, Cheyenne does this, but I have a special place in my heart for beagles. So I'm always a fan of beagles beyond here. But Neil, for those who don't know you, would you like to introduce yourself and Breezy? I would, but I just want to take a few seconds first to thank you for this forum that you give to people like Cheyenne and people like me. You know, it's funny. I have trouble getting lunch dates because people know if they go to lunch with me, they're going to get stories about pet therapy. So they're just like, no, I can't make it today, Neil. But you actually want to hear about pet therapy. For me, I was never in a fraternity in college or high school or anything, but I feel now that I'm in a fraternity because there's a lot of people out there just like me and just like Breezy that are giving of their time and just love pet therapy. So I feel part of it and thank you for the form you're giving us. So a little bit of introduction. My name is Neil. My beagle is Breezy. In case you missed it the first time, there he is. Actually, it's pretty true to life. He looks a lot like that. And we're down here in Tampa, Florida. We avoided the hurricane last week, but we still have about two months left of hurricane season. So it's kind of crazy. Breezy, again, is a beagle. He's uh, a little over 11 years old. And he was a uh, rescue. I rescued him in 2014 from New Iberia Parish, Louisiana. We were involved with pet therapy from 2015 to 2020 with a group called Paws for Friendship down here. Well, it's based out of Tampa. Paws for Friendship is actually a national organization, internationally, actually, because they do it in Canada, too. The group's been in existence for almost 30 years. And from 2015 to 2020, Breezy and I did, over those five years, over 700 pet therapy visits. We did a lot at assisted living and a lot at nursing homes. We also did a lot with reading programs for kids, especially second graders, kids who had trouble with reading. We also, there's a place in Tampa, it's called Joshua House, which is a refuge for children of all ages whose parents neglected or abused them. And now things are caught up in the court system, or maybe the parents are in jail or whatever. But this is a refuge for kids to go to and, and be able to go to school and live together. We've done visits there. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a sad part to this too. In the summer of 2021, Breezy was diagnosed with B-cell lymphoma. So we've had to go through chemotherapy for the last two years. And Breezy was recently in his third remission. Unfortunately, last week, he came out of remission again. So it looks like we're going to have to go back into the lab and start chemo again. But he's tolerated it well, although he does have side effects and he can't be around other dogs. And because of that, we've had to take a hiatus from pet therapy for a couple of years. But I'm hoping that once we get to a certain point, that he'll be able to go back and we'll be able to pick up right where we left off. So I'll ask everybody who's watching today to please say a prayer for Breezy, but he's doing well. We're hanging in there. The average life expectancy for somebody who has what he has is less than a year from date of diagnosis. And Breezy's made it over two years so far. So he continues to defy the odds. And again, all prayers are well. He's not done sharing his love with you. Well, Neil, how did you discover the role of therapy dogs? Well, it's kind of funny because I watched a couple of these interviews that you've had, and I think our story is a little bit different than most. I always tell people that we didn't find pet therapy. Pet therapy found us. That's something that we said, hey, I think I want to make this dog a therapy. I never thought about it ever. I had had Breezy for about, oh, about six months. It was the beginning of 2015. 
we were out driving around through an area called Safety Harbor, Florida, which I don't know the area that well. So I called a buddy of mine. I said, hey, any cool parks around here? She goes, yeah, there's a brand new one. You should go by. So we went by it was, and we got there and there was tons of traffic. Lucky us, there was a dog event taking place at that park that day. How lucky could we be? So it was terrific because I was looking for situations to socialize breezy and always wanted to be around a lot of people and a lot of other animals and situations. So we were walking around. There's all these vendors and booths everywhere, a lot of people, a lot of dogs. So we're just skipping around between booth to booth and Breezy's interacting with dogs, interacting with people, and we're having a great old time. Then I came across this one booth. It was nondescript. They had a bunch of people around it and it said animal assisted therapy. It wasn't too sexy and I didn't really know what it was. So I peeked over and looked around, kicked a few tires and moved to the next booth. But then I noticed there was one lady from behind the booth that almost looked like she was trying to get our attention, but I just kept walking. So we went to the next booth. It was some sort of food vendor. And all of a sudden I saw that lady following us a little bit. And for over the next like 20 minutes, it seemed like this lady was like stalking us. I just thought that was the weirdest thing. So about a half hour later, we're on the other side of the park. I get a tap on my shoulder and it was a lady. And she says, oh, your beagle is so beautiful. Can I say hello to him? I'm like, of course. And Breezy, of course, loves attention. So I thought, does she track me for a half hour just to say hello to my dog? And then she hit me, Sherry, with the question that changed my life and Breezy's life too. She said, have you ever thought about sharing him with others? And I had no idea what she was talking about. And then she goes on to tell me that she is the president of Pause for Friendship. They've been in existence for 25 years at that time. They have a booth there. And she said, we have therapy dogs and your dog would make an awesome therapy dog. And this kind of caught me out. I'm a therapy dog. What, what are you talking about? I said, How do you know my dog could be a therapy dog? She said, first of all, I've been doing this for 25 years. Second of all, I've been watching you for the last half hour. Typically, when we find a dog that we're interested in, they have to go through training. They have to go through evaluation. They have to be friendly to strangers and sit politely and go on a loose leash and listen to your commands and sit and stay. All these like good canine citizenship stuff. You've already passed the test. I said, I passed the test. She goes, breezy. Your dog has checked every single box. The best thing is you didn't even know I was watching you. You you did it. I said, well, you really think he could do it? She said, I know he could do it. This dog is a star. So I said, well, what do we do next? I mean, what do we do? She says, I want you to meet up with some of our other evaluators. They visit an assisted living facility themselves with their dogs on Friday. I want you to go there. I want Breezy to shadow them. And they're going to evaluate to see if the skills I saw here today transition to the real world. So that's how we were discovered. It was just an innocent day, January 17th of 2015, minding our own business. Pet therapy found us. That's great. What is it that she saw or that you saw in Breezy that let you know he would really enjoy volunteering? Well, the funny thing is I was still skeptical and I'll, whether you'll ask or not, I want to get to that when we went to get evaluated at the facility, but. I didn't really think he could, I didn't, when I think of therapy dogs, I thought service dogs, I've got a neighbor of mine that has a service dog and I'm like, nah, typically when you see like service dogs and therapy dogs, I've always seen a lot of retrievers and just de- beagles just, they can be kind of hyper sometimes. So I guess she saw something in them. She just saw just something innate in them. In addition to all the different traits that are required of a therapy dog that she saw, I guess, based on her years of experience. So even when we went to the assisted living with the other evaluators, I was still very skeptical even at that point. Yeah. Well, so you said you wanted to share more about that. Tell us about that evaluation and how you changed from skeptical to, yeah, this is a good fit for us. Sherry, it was a day that I, when she said to me, have you ever thought about sharing your dog with others? That was one day that changed my life. The next time was, I'll never forget it. I can remember it like it was this morning that it happened. So we get to the assisted living facility in Clearwater. We're in the parking lot. We're parked right by the front door and I'm waiting. I'm nervous and I'm looking for these cars pulling in. It was a noon appearance. So we were there like 11, just sitting there waiting at like five minutes to noon. And I see these two cars pull in. I see a lady in each car driving and I see a dog in each car. I'm like, oh, that must be them. So we get out of the car, take a deep breath, kind of waiting. I see them get out of the car. One was a poodle. One was a golden retriever and they start walking toward us. And I'm like, okay, they look like nice dogs. Okay. We're cool. The dogs get a little bit closer and all of a sudden this little neurotic beagle of mine 
starts barking and howling and jumping around. He wanted to play and he was just panting and barking. And these other dogs are looking at him like, what's up with this beagle? So at that point, I'm like, all right, we're dead. It's like a rocket on the launch pad that just explodes. Our pet therapy career ended before it even started. There's, there's no way we can't do this. I asked the lady, I said, hey, he's just excited. Can we take five, 10 minutes just to let him get used to the dogs? And they're like, nope, we got to go in right now. I'm like, like right now? And meanwhile, Breezy's he's still hooping and hollering. And I'm like, oh, I, I was, you know, chest pains. And then a moment I'll never forget. The door to that facility opened up. Breezy took one step in that facility and Sherry and everybody else who's watching, it was like I was watching the matrix. That moment was frozen in time. He took one step in that door. He calmed down. He didn't care about the other two dogs. He was engaging. He was calm. He walked up to people. I couldn't believe it, but I saw it. it was almost as if a switch had been flipped. He went from being that crazy to that calm within a matter of seconds. So we went in and these ladies had been going there for a while. So they were pretty well known, these two dogs, but everybody wanted to know who the new dog was. Who's the new beak? We were there for 90 minutes and Bree's unbelievable. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Now, the funny thing is when we left, the minute we walked out the door and the doors closed behind us when we were back in the parking lot, Breezy resumed his gleefulness and his playfulness. But I asked the ladies, I said, so what do you think? They both looked at me and they said, this dog is a natural. Did you train? I said, no, I've never done anything. They said, he's ready. He is ready not only to go on existing visits with people like us, but he can go solo. And I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. We wound up staying and doing visits with those two ladies weekly for the next five years. One of the ladies dropped off. And then one of the ladies with her golden retriever, we were with for the duration. So it was an unbelievable story. I never saw it coming. And I don't know how he knew what to do, but our innate Sherry, they're just there. You got it or you don't. And Breezy has it. Yeah. Had you seen him interact with people like that before? Not in that situation. No, one thing I've always, I tell people that want to get involved with pet therapy, I said, the best thing you can do, and this is something I did not thinking about pet therapy. I'm always taking breezy places. I always wanted to take him where there's a lot of people. If there was a concert or art show, or we go to the Tampa River War or the St. Petersburg Pier, a common place where there's going to be a lot of different noises and different people and just different situations. I want to get him accustomed to everything. And breezy, he just loves attention. He loves attention. I knew he was good with kids because we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood and he was just terrific. The senior citizens, you could have fooled me. We really hadn't been around that many seniors. When we walked into that assisted living facility, Sherry, I wish I could transfer what's in my brain right now. He was so calm. I was so proud of him. I cried all the way home. And little did I know at that moment what was about to happen over the next five years. It was just, what a blessing. What a blessing. Definitely. How old was he when you started volunteering? Well, I got Breezy when he was two years old. He was a rescue. He was two when I got him at the ballpark. The rescue said he was about two years old. And we started about six months later. So probably, you know, anywhere between two and three years old. I will say this, very lucky that we started our first visits with those two dogs. And then we kept going with them because I could see even as good as Breezy was in that first visit, as every passed and got better and better. And I could see him looking to the other dogs for like mentor. And one dog that Penny may she rest in peace. She's the best therapy dog. We worked with dozens of therapy dogs over the years. Penny, we were so blessed to have her as a mentor. She's passed away since, but what a great mentor. And the two of them, I almost want to cry talking about her. Going to that facility for five years together every week. I feel so blessed to have been part of it and everything else we wound up doing. Yeah, definitely. Is there a story that stands out to you from your time volunteering together that's just a really good example of why you enjoy doing this work with him? Well, there's a lot, and I know our time is limited. Let me tell you about Tom. Out at the assisted living facility I referenced before, this is another one where Breezy and I used to go by ourselves. We visited a guy named Tom for probably two and a half, three years, and he loved Breezy, loved him. We saw him every week for two and a half or three years. And I got to know Tom Weiss because she would visit a lot. But Tom started fading and we see that. And then he went into hot this care, but we kept visiting. We were there on a Tuesday, our regular day to visit Tom. And he was in a really rough shape. They had him pretty drugged up as a lot of people are in hospice care. And we left, felt bad. And I, I didn't know if we'd ever see him again. And we went home 
And then the next morning my phone rang and it was Tom's wife. I thought she's going to give me the bad news that he had passed. Well, no, he hadn't passed, but she said he was pretty close. I felt terrible, of course. And she said, I need to ask you for a favor. She said, I know you were here yesterday, but could you come back again today and visit Tom? The guy's in his eighties. He's now probably thousands of people in his life. And he's had a full life with children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. And what is to be his last day on this earth? His wife wanted Breezy to be there with. Of course we went. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but we went there. We sat next to him. I took Tom's hand. And I put it on Breezy's back. I rubbed it. He was not communicative at that point, but I pray to God that Tom could feel Breezy that day. And he died later that night. It just showed me the power of pet therapy. And it was a good learning experience for me at that point to say, you know what? There's no visit that's routine, nothing. Because at any time, no matter who we're visiting, young or old, we could be amongst the last people they ever see on this earth. And there were days where I was tired or didn't feel like going, or maybe Breezy didn't feel well. We never missed a visit because every visit was important. Every one of those 700 plus visits were essential. I've got other stories like that. We can talk off air sometime, but that was one that I'll never, I'll never forget. And for those who aren't familiar, you actually put together a full length documentary about your journey with Brazy, including bringing him home and your journey to pet therapy. What kind of inspired you to put that together? What led you to do well, that? You got an amazing story. I mean, he ultimate rags to riches. The earliest thing we know about him, he was wandering around a rural road in a very small town in Louisiana where it's one lane each direction, 75 miles an hour, trucks, hares, and coyotes along the sugarcane fields. And Breezy was spotted along that road for a couple of weeks. Ultimately, he was pulled by somebody who he finally able to lure him. She took him to a shelter. Nobody claimed him. It was a high kill shelter. He was going to be euthanized. And at the last minute, the dear lady who saves beagles, and rescues them, pulled him out of that kill shelter, fostered him for a few weeks. Ultimately, he got in with Southeast Beagle Rescue, and that's how I got him through that rescue group. And then he became this, I wouldn't say nationally recognized, but he's received the highest honors through the AKC with pet therapy. He's received all the accolades. And to go from where he came from to where he is and making these people happy and changing their lives, I've had this story in my head. It's this great story of survival and perseverance and love. So I was going to but then COVID hit. We had extra time on our hands because we couldn't do pet therapy. So I made a movie about his story. And I know you're going to post the link. The movie's long, but if you watched, I guarantee you'll love it. And I'm so happy I did that while Breezy's still with us. If I did the story after he passed away or was gone, it would be hard to do. But the labor of love, and it was a great story. There's some great behind the scenes stuff from pet therapy I think people would enjoy. Oh, hey, I have to show you something really quick. When we visited, I have some leave behinds that we used to do. Breezy became like an industry. It was like having Oprah Winfrey as my dog. So <laughs> when, when we went to visit the kids at the elementary school, I had these bracelets made that say Breezy. And on the back, it says pet therapy dog. And I wear one all the time myself. So we used to leave these behind to the kids. For the older people, I had these Oprah-sized refrigerator magnets made with his picture. Also in December, the county I live in, wrote an article about Breezy. It's called World of West Chase Magazine. They wrote an article about Breezy, about his journey from humble beginnings to nationally known pet therapy dog. So as you can tell, I'm very proud of Breezy. I'm a big advocate of pet therapy and I love pet therapy. And for all you people out there that do pet therapy, God bless you. Keep doing it. Yeah, I love Breezy's resilient story and just it's so clear the impact that he's made on you. And I know a lot of that is because of the impact you've seen him make on others. But it's really beautiful to see how much you really love him and care about his experiences for sure. Bill, what advice do you have for someone who is interested in becoming a pet therapy? Well, I would say, like I said before, social life. Take your dog everywhere. I used to take Breezy to the bank. I would take him if I went to like Bed Bath & Beyond, any place that you could take a dog and show them different sides of life and different situations and noises, take them there. And follow your dog's lead. I didn't have to lead Breezy around. I followed his lead. I followed his instincts. I trust his instincts. So follow your dog. They know what they're doing. And remember, is when we first started, they told us at Pause for Friendship, the dog is the star. You are the chauffeur. You're chauffeuring the star. I thought that was kind of rough when they first said that, but believe me, it's the absolute truth. And uh, just invest yourself in it. If you can do it one day a week or one day a month, go to once a week. And if you can do it once a week, do it twice a week. 
because you're going to change somebody's day. You're going to make their life better. And let me tell you something. People that we visited obviously benefited from Breezy, both young and old. Breezy benefited. He loved it. I mean, who wouldn't? He just sits there and he gets petted all day. It's wonderful. I feel like I got the best of all world. I got to sit there with a front row seat for five years, sometimes five visits in a day, sometimes popping all over Tampa Bay. I got to watch someone who I love more than life itself make other people happy and make lasting relationships. So invest in it. Don't just do it. Invest in it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, Neil, is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here? Well, one other thing quickly, and this kind of goes to the line with when I say invest in it. I was always a benevolent person, a stroke a check to charities. And you know what? Charities need money. So money shouldn't be discounted. I'll still stroke checks to charity. And I'm not saying that therapy is charity, but the minute I started being able to see the fruits of my labor immediately, I mean, out of those 700 visits we did, all 700 of them, I'd get in my car afterwards and I would have to take a deep breath because something always happened that I witnessed that was in my mind. I hate to use the word life-changing too many times, but it was life-changing. Stroking checks to charity are great, but whether it's Metropolitan Ministries or a food bank or taking your dog to pet therapy, and you get to see the eyes and the faces of the people that you're impacting immediately, there is nothing like it. It's like a drug. It's addictive. And the more we did pet therapy, the more we wanted to do more. And God, if you're listening right now and we can get this dog healthy again, we'll be back at it and doing it again. So just if anybody ever has a chance to watch my movie, please do. And I hope it inspires you. Yeah, I'll definitely link it in the show notes. Neil, I know you joined Instagram just to do this interview, which I really, really appreciate. But where can people find you if they want to follow your journey with Breezy? Well, that question. I just joined Instagram for this, but I'll stay on Instagram and I will start posting pictures regularly. So people want to follow me on this Instagram. They can follow me that way. Okay. And it's Breezy the Therapy Dog, right? Breezy the Therapy Dog. And again, all prayers are welcome. The chemo thing, great, but that's just a, a small part of the puzzle. But uh, Breezy's still, he's doing great. He's exceeded his life expectancy, but we want to keep him around a little bit longer, a lot longer. Sounds like he has a lot of love to share. So sending all the healing and love his way. All right. Well, thank you so much, Neil. I really appreciate you taking the time today. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. And thank you for what you do, Sherry. You're a saint. Thank you for what you do. Tell Breezy we said hello. All right. Bye. Bye.